Honestly, that was so nice. Yeah, it was. That was nice. Is is this what cheering for a normal team is like? Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits. Bless the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How much more's going to bet after watching that? I'm quite hyped. <laughs> With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Victory Puppy Ziggy, you get two because you weren't in the last video because you were asleep and I had to wake him up for this one. This is the thing with Night of LFRs. But he catches both of them, yeah! Woo! Huh? See? You got Victory Puppies this time. Everybody leave me alone. Leafs win! Four to nothing over the Vegas Golden Knights because they should have and let me explain. Can I tell you what this reminded me of? This game in its entirety? One time I went to the mall in Oshawa. Don't laugh, I like Oshawa. And I went to a place called David's Tea. Do you know it? It's owned by a guy named David and they sell tea there. And when I went there, I was sick. This is in the before time, in the long, long ago, before COVID, when it was sort of normal to go out sick and I kind of don't know if we should ever go back to that. Anyway, I wasn't feeling well and I said, what is the perfect tea for if you're not feeling well? And he laid it out for me and he gave me the tea and I said, how much is it? And he said, it's free because there's nothing better than feeling better. That was so kind and awesome on account of he doesn't own the store, what does he care? But also it's kind of a brilliant strategy because he's like, maybe one day I'll get free advertising for David's tea. Anyway, I tell you that story because I don't know what was in the tea, I don't know if it was a placebo effect, but I was like, you're right, there is nothing better than feeling better. This tea is exactly what I needed and for Leafs Nation, all of you, for me, for you, for everyone, that game is exactly, exactly what this fan base and what this team needed. And I can honestly say there's nothing better than feeling better. Chicken soup for the Leafs fans' soul. And speaking of which, good soup. And before you get too excited, yes, I know it was a banged up Vegas Golden Knights group. They're missing all the people who essentially make the Vegas Golden Knights, who the Vegas Golden Knights are. But the Leafs have not exactly locked those games down in recent memory. This was the sort of game where you got a team banged up on the road. You're at home. You're rested. You're coming off of two straight wins. You should dismantle them and they finally did. Is this what it feels like to cheer for a normal team? Like, I'm serious, heading into this game, I was like, oh God, what's Michael Amadio gonna do? With all due respect, no fan should ever be like, oh my God, what is Michael Amadio gonna do? Michael Amadio is an NHL player. He's a better hockey player than you or I will ever be if we were granted immortality and given a thousand years to train, but you should not head into a game fearing him. Steve, what are you so worried about a guy that the Leafs lost on waivers? You've never heard of Peter Holland, ever? Babcock never plays him, the Leafs lose him to Arizona, and then he scores the game winner in the shootout the next week in Toronto, might I add? I'm sorry if I felt haunted. But no, none of that. He didn't score. None of the Vegas Golden Knights scored. Jack Campbell had an amazing game. Didn't really have to be that amazing, but the saves that he did make were amazing. And who scored? Well, who would you like to score? You're paying to see the Leafs. Who would you like to score? Mitch Marner? That'd be pretty good. Get him going. He didn't even look happy to score last game. Austin Matthews? Oh, I, I want to see him score a goal. Maybe even two. And William Nylander, just because. That is the theme. Like, should we even bother breaking the game down piece by piece? Everything about this game was exactly what the team needed. They outshot the Vegas Golden Knights, and they outchanced them. They didn't just have the puck and sort of Beyblade with it around the net. They did stuff. And it was great. And then Vegas would try to do stuff and we'd be like, oh no, Vegas, all the power play and nothing. It was wonderful. Listen, the Leafs should try hard every single game. Every single game, they should give it their all. They're in the National Hockey League. There are no off nights, but the fans, we should have been able to watch this game and relax, just chill. And for once, the first time this season, we could. And wasn't it the Best! Mitch Marner looking as Mitch Marnery is doing spinneroonies on the backhand and confiscating jocks in front of the net, basically getting back to being Stuart from Mad TV and going, Look at that, you And dude, look at this reaction. Producer Drew, throw it up. This is the face of a man who has had the weight of a thousand mountains lifted off of his back. I thought he's had a pretty good last few games. He's been playing well. He's been decent in the defensive zone and everything, in the neutral zone. He's been doing the right things. 
but you see him getting a little bit more cheeky. He's getting a little bit more creative. And I don't care how well he's playing at the other parts of the ice. Mitch Marner needed this goal for his soul. And I'm so glad he got it. A three-point night for the lad! That's Mitch Marner scoring the type of goal that Mitch Marner can score. And the two assists on that play, by the way, Tavares and Kerfoot, that line looks great. I think we have something here. Marner's second point of the night comes in the second period. It's a secondary assist. That's a lot of seconds on the Matthews power play goal. PP1 getting a goal! Separating Matthews and Nylander on the power play, there's arguments for it, there's arguments against it. But when you watch Nylander do that little seam pass over to Austin Matthews, Matthews, it makes it feel like criminal activity. That you would ever, ever keep them apart. Watching Nylander make that pass to Austin Matthews makes me want to be a better man. Watching Nylander make that pass to Matthews makes me want to call someone I haven't spoken to in a long time just to check up on him. If you were moved by that pass as I was, it's good. get flowers, get flowers. I don't care who you give them to. In the drive-thru tomorrow, pay for the person behind you. Just be prepared that their order might be big. That happened to me once, but whatever, I felt good about it. And it's not just that Matthews scored. It's that he scored the way he did. Because he has a goal. We've seen him score this season. We know he can do it. Matthews can score. He can get to the dirty areas. We know that. He can score greasy goals too if he wants to. But, again, if you're paying to see the Toronto Maple Leafs, you want to see him do that thing where he turns the puck into a laser. And I just feel like there's this subtext in Leafs Nation that even though he's been using his shot over and over and over again, and yeah, his shooting percentage is going to improve, for sure it is, for sure it is, there's that little lingering thought that, well, he's coming off of wrist surgery. And then you see him rip that shot past Robin Leonard, and I'm like, what's wrist surgery? What's a wrist? I've never heard of it. I'm not a doctor. Who are you a doctor? No, you're not. Just watch the game and shut up! And Drew, throw up Robin Leonard's reaction to this goal. This is how goaltenders should react to Austin Matthews, especially at home. And oh, I'm sorry, Robin. I'm sorry. I do like you, but this is great. Second period's not over. Marner doing an excellent job of holding the zone and walking the line and keeping the puck alive. Feeds it to Morgan Riley. Beautiful pass in front. Riley has been cooking since signing that contract. Is it you, me, or I'm pretty sure it's Drew. Matthews bangs it in, well not quite. Matthews bangs it and it hits the crossbar, a play that the hockey gods would usually go, ha, and take it away. And you might be like, Steve, you looked up when you impersonated the hockey gods. And yes, if you're a Leafs fan, you would assume that they're in hell. But you would assume wrong, ye of little faith, because the puck bounces down and off a of Lenner and in. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I'm looking up. And the Leafs head into the third with a 3-0 lead against a traveling team that is banged up and why am I so anxious? Oh my god, I'm audio hat trick. What a how to I'm ad 3-0. I gotta think of a title for the video. Michael has an E, I can put it there, okay. But instead, less than three minutes into the period, William Nylander says, Don't you worry, you sweet little boy. And I said, promise? And you know what he said next? Nothing. He just winked at me, sped off, and scored a goal at the other end of the ice. And after he scored, he came back down to my end, and he slammed the glass, and he was giving me a high five. And I said, Willie, is this only happening inside my head? Is this real? And he responded, Stephen, of course it is happening inside your head. But why on earth should that mean that it is not real? And then before I woke up, I think he said trans rights, which I thought was cool. Where was I? Sorry. What led to that fantasy scenario is a one puck battle by Michael Bunting, and then just an excellent pass. And here's, here's why it happens. Look at both Vegas defensemen. Both of them definitely think this puck is coming to Austin Matthews, and it very doesn't. It goes all the way to Willie. This gives Willie the open lane, which you very shouldn't give it to Willie unless you're a Leafs fan. In that case, it's awesome, and he just snipes it. It's 4 nothing Leafs. But then Vegas comes back with a mighty nothing. Nothing. It was great. It was, wasn't that great? They went up 4 nothing early in the third. And not for a minute did I say, oh no. It was, you know how most fans get to enjoy a four goal lead? We got that tonight. Wasn't that great? It was great. And Jack Campbell, who did make some good saves, it's not like the Leafs were totally flawless, gets a shutout. Questions and notes. First of all, I thought this tweet was funny. The Leafs are playing like everyone really hates Justin Hall. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it out there that he should not be in the lineup next game either because the last time the Leafs won a game 4-0 and then changed up the D pairings the next game, 
Um, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Steve, I don't actually remember. I don't want to talk about it. And neither do you, trust me. And this from Luke Fox, give it to me, buddy. Jack Campbell says he's focused on hockey, but doesn't deny Nick Kiprios' report that contract extension negotiations are underway. There's nothing more I'd love than to stay here. From the Born Ruffians, no questions, just Marlander Thews. Yes, absolutely Marlander Thews. That, that, they, mm. Every opponent the Leafs face should see those three under their bed before they go to sleep. And then they wake up and realize it was a dream and John Tavares is there! There should be no break from this team offensively. All the 7 p.m. games ended in shutouts. Coincidence? I mean, yeah. I thought Lilligren was our best defenseman tonight. What are your thoughts? I don't know if I would say that, but I would say he looks extremely good. He looks very solid. And he's not just existing anymore. Like that dude was in the lineup to survive. Now, on top of him being pretty responsible in his own end, he's jumping up. He's making plays. He's making nice stretch passes. He, he's, he's going behind the net a little bit and, and into the slot. And, and I just never look at what he's doing and go, Timoth, what are you doing? I'm going to be honest. I don't know how you take him out of the lineup, let alone send him down. Was this Mitch Marner's best game of this season? Mitch Marner's best game of this season so far. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Link in the description down below I am raising money for Easter seals it's a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities I'm around 20 grand raise right now if we get to 50 grand I'm gonna let hat guy do his own LFR and I should say we got a new Steve Dangle podcast coming tomorrow and we got an announcement that I think you're gonna like another announcement I know